Welcome to this short documentary on the fascinating subject of pure intonation. You may have heard of a musical phenomenon which I am about to explain, the harmonic series. Because of the nature of sound waves, every musical tone naturally has audible complementary tones on top of it, called harmonics. The original tone, called the fundamental, is the first term in a series of harmonics called the harmonic series. It is easy to hear these harmonics or overtones when listening to a very low note played on an instrument such as the piano. The fundamental in this case is a low D, but you may have heard a lot of higher frequencies on top of it. Even though only one low note was played, a lot more relatively higher notes were heard emanating out of it because of the laws of nature. Let's say that the pitch of a fundamental is 100 Hz. A naturally occurring harmonic, which is exactly twice the frequency of the fundamental, would be faintly heard on top. Mathematically speaking, the first term of the series is the fundamental at 100 Hz. The second term is the aforementioned harmonic at 200 Hz, the fundamental's frequency times 2, followed by the next harmonic, term number 3, which is 300 Hz, fundamentals frequency times 3, followed by the fourth term, which is 400 Hz, and so on and so on. However, it just so happens that naturally a note which has a frequency twice of that of another is what we call in music an octave above. <laughs> Three times the frequency, musically, is an octave plus a further fifth above. And four times the frequency, two octaves. Five times the frequency is where things get interesting. Two octaves plus a major third. You may have noticed that we now have the notes to make up a major chord from just the harmonics of one note. Major chords exist abundantly and naturally due to the laws of physics. However, the tones of the harmonic series produce a major chord which sounds different to how we commonly hear major chords, such as on a piano. The 12 notes in an octave on a piano have exact spacing between them, musically speaking. If we hear music in a major key on the piano, the fifth is ever so slightly flatter than what we'd hear in the harmonic series. The third, however, is very noticeably sharp compared to what we'd hear in the harmonic series. If we wanted to hear a perfect C major chord on the piano according to the harmonic series, we'd then run into problems if we also wanted to hear, for example, an A major chord without retuning the instrument, as the E would be far too flat. For an A major, the E is a fifth, the third term in the harmonic series, and in C major, the E is a third, the fifth term in the harmonic series. This is an age-old problem which can be solved by having all 12 notes with equal spaces in between them, therefore making every major chord consistently tuned this practice is called equal temperament and is used in virtually all music heard today, especially in digitally produced music. Equal temperament is by no means a perfect solution, however. The practice of playing music aiming to match that of the harmonic series is known as pure intonation. You're about to hear two chords. The first uses equal temperament and the second uses pure intonation. You can probably see from these diagrams that the sound waves of major chords which use pure intonation are massively consistent, lining up with each other's vibrations, being at mathematically symbiotic frequencies. However, in the case of equal temperament, this is not the case. You can see after each period of waves where they would normally match up again, the waves get less and less synchronous with each other. This is audible as well. 
Listen again and see if you can faintly hear the inconsistencies in the sound of equal temperament, which manifest as wavering vibrations resulting from the waves interfering with each other, not bearing mathematical similarity. This effect is not there with pure intonation. The sound is much more consistent and smooth, resembling the visuals of its respective sound waves. Perhaps you are able to hear this as well. When pure intonation is practiced correctly, the sounds produced by the instruments or voices all resonate together in a way which is physically similar, with their vibrations coinciding hundreds of times a second. For me, this resembles an audible sensation of voices or instruments perfectly resonating with each other. Have a listen to this recording of Bach's chorale, Jesu deine Passion ist lauter Freude. This recording gets pretty close to pure intonation, but have a listen to this other one, which gets much closer, especially on the last chord. Have a listen to two more recordings both from the Symphonia to Part 2 of Bach's Weinach Oratorium. In the second recording, the last chord makes use of pure intonation very well, and I hope you'll be able to hear this as well. Of course, both of those recordings made beautiful use of pure intonation, but you'll probably agree with me that on the last chord of that second recording, pure intonation was used extra effectively. Of course, pure intonation sounds beautiful, as you've just heard, and it is my sentiment that it amplifies the emotional message of music, but it doesn't come without challenges. Carefully considering the intonation of every note is harder than automatically placing every note in a default, standardised way, like with equal temperament. But I believe that every musician could benefit enormously from thinking more about pure intonation and applying it. What do you think? Are you tempted to agree with me in that using pure intonation is better than using equal temperament? Do you believe that it is too much of a tall order to expect musicians to always strive towards it? Let me know any thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.